Oh, right. Pranang Darblant. Oh, which is Welsh for good afternoon, children. <laughs> I feel like I'm doing a watch with mother here. Now, this is the basket or the little pouch thingy that we've been talking about that I keep all my uh, little wonder clips in. It's lovely because obviously it sits there so you can dive your hand in and get what you want. Uh, but also, you can squish it up and it fits in a drawer and you don't have to worry about, oh, my drawer's got to be so high because you can just shove it in. <laughs> so it, it's really nice in that respect. Uh, uh, you, I mean, you don't need to keep sewing stuff in it. You don't need to keep reels or um, things like that in it. But, you know, if somebody said, who is it, Gail? She said, uh, oh, could do with that. Do it in a Christmas fabric and use it for Clementines or... Uh, you know, sweeties or something at Christmas time. It, 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 it's, it's all purpose. Do what you want with it. So I decided, as you know, this material, this fabric, is what I've used for my lovely sewing cover. And that was what I used as the um, contrast on my sewing cover. So mine is on a, a big bolt. So you're going to need 10 inch squares to make these. So, an outside fabric and an inside fabric, your choice. You're also going to want some foam bosal. Now, I buy mine on, as you can see, great big pieces. And then I cut out a piece that I want. Like, I can cut a 10-inch square easy out of that, yeah? And can you see that there are, it looks like there's creases in it? Well, when it comes... It gets folded up, it's creased. But if you just don't touch it with an iron, but just hold the steam iron over the top, those creases will just pop out. So don't worry about that. So that's foam bosal. So I'm going to do one in that. Whoops, because that's quite stiff, which is what this one is made of. And then, oh, in case you've got some of this and you think, well, I'd rather do this, this is marks on it this is heat and bond fusible fleece okay so uh let me just get a bit to show you it's not it's, it's nowhere near as thick as the other but it is fusible this one you can the bosal you can buy fusible as well but it and it, it will hold the shape but not as firmly as that one. But it, this is cheaper. I mean, because I do an awful lot of projects. Yeah, you can see I buy things by the bolt. Uh, the bozo, I think, the smallest way you can buy it. Oh, that's a different thing altogether. Hang on a minute. Uh, well. No, can't find it now. But the bozo, this isn't that, but this is Jewett Fuse, this is different. Uh, but uh, it comes in a packet like that. That, But I again, I buy mine off the bulk because it's cheaper. Uh, so that's what you need to get. I will post up uh, you know, the Amazon clips links so that you can see what I'm actually using. So first off, I need 10 inch squares of these two fabrics. Well, as I'm going to do it twice, I'm not worried. I'm cutting it off the bolt. Uh, so I'm just going to line up my naught naught. So I love these rulers. Absolutely love these rulers. I'm lining up my naught naught on the edge. Get my cutter. 10 inch across here, 10 inches. Just going to do that twice because it's very, I've got it folded so many times. Take that away, don't need that anymore. There's a 10 inch strip for me. And now I'll start this end where I've got two loose bits. Save material and I'll just pop that back on and if you notice, I'm coming quite a way in because this end has got the, it's not quite straight and it's got the uh, 
selvages on this end so I'm coming in quite away from the tip of the material the edge of the material cutting my knot everything's nice and straight ish straight yeah I'll just cut that knot again in case it wasn't straight <laughs> and coming along 10 inches cutting up get rid of that bit now that bit had the fold on it so it's still a nice long bit more purposeful than cutting from the fold end uh, and this one get rid of that and there are my two 10 inch squares and again I am doing them 10 inches because I'm doing two because I'm making two boxes and again off this uh, other piece Line it all up. I am going to come in off the edge just to give myself a clean edge on this one because I don't know how wacky to this edge is. So up on my knot line, up on my, oops, get in there, you silly sod, up on my 10 inch line, and that's that cut. This, before you go asking me again, keep this is my giant A stacks, we've decided to call this, but it is an actual fact. Tripology XL ruler from Creative Grids. I put the link up for Creative Grids when I was answering Jane Griffiths a little while ago, a few days ago. So, oh, now look, see my fold now is on there. Is at the top. Oh, no, it's not. No, I don't know why I thought that. Okay, same thing. So coming in a little way from my uh salvage lining that top edge the bottom edge because we know that's 10 inches now and again do exactly the same thing oops 10 inches that's my 10 inch squares get rid of that add that get rid of that right put that away now so i've got two Put them both the right way up. This is this white on white that I like. See it? Anyway, so and I've got two pink and two white. You only want one one of each. But I'm doing it twice in two different methods for you. So that's what we need to do. Oh, and the next thing obviously we need to do is to cut the bosel that we're going to use. Now it's a bit difficult for me to use my... Um, oop. And that's only nine and a half. Excuse me, I get down a few inches. Uh, 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 so, old fashioned way on this one one, one in the corner, ten along the top. So, one, one, ten. Yep. So, this is how you would do it if you've got different rulers. So, that's get rid of that. That's ten inches that way. Turn it round, one, one in the corner. 10 on the side, up there, yep, get rid of that, so that's a 10 inch square, so you would cut it like that, and the next thing I need to do is to cut the bolt for the same, well you know where that's going to go, so I'll come back to you in a minute. Right, so on this 10 by 10 square, I want it only to be, I want it to be 10 and a half, 10 wide, yeah, which it is. But I only want it to be nine uh with nine high. I'm gonna turn it around a minute. So I've got my ten across the top and I'm gonna put my nine on the bottom. Square it up really square it up and I'm going to cut off different okay now oops, this square that we cut is now 10 wide but only 9 high a minute and now I'm going to take mine isn't fusible 
so I need to sew it. So I'm going to take the piece that I've just cut, centralise it on my 10 inch by 10 inch block, yeah? It, I could say to you, oh well, put a pin in it. Well, yeah, perhaps, but you're better off using clips because clips work with foam far better than uh, pins. So it should be the same width, 10 inch, bring it over, yeah. So I put these clips on, that's upside down, these clips have got a flat edge and a, a curved edge and obviously you want the flat edge to be on the bottom, yeah? Let's just uh, move it across a little bit, no matter at the end of the day. Now I'm going to take this over to the machine and I'm going to do an eighth of an inch seam all the way around the outside, just an eighth of an inch. So half a quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch, all the way around, just to uh, fix this to the bosal behind. If you have fusible bosal, fusible foam, then read the instructions. Read the manufacturer's instructions of how you would iron that to that. Uh, uh, one of the reasons I don't buy fusible bosal is because no matter how I do, I always end up with wrinkles in this fabric. So I prefer to use a sew-in type. When it comes to the other one, the fleece, the fleece is not so bad. But the bosal, I've never got on with fusible bosal. So uh, if I do have to buy fusible bosal, because sometimes Amazon is out of stock or, or, or someone's out of stock, I can't get it. And I, have to, I, I will buy the single side diffusible, but... I won't actually fuse it. I just treat it as if it's sewing. I don't fuse it because I, I over the years I've had so many problems with it. Anyway, so here we are. So I'm going to go now uh, and sew it. I'm also I'm going to increase my stitch length on my machine to about a three three and a half. I am not going to use teeny little stitches for this because oh well it just won't work. The other thing I'm going to do. Is I'm going to put my walk because this is so thick now yeah I'm gonna put my walking foot on so that I've got top pressure and bottom pressure to help it through the machine so stitch length three to three and a half and a walking foot and I'm just gonna do an eighth of an inch all the way around to fix this top fabric to the bosal okay so now I'm back at my big machine Jumbo Janome. I have put on, uh, I'm only using white thread, and I have put on my walking foot. I am using my HP uh, plate and foot, which <coughs> HP stands, stands for high precision. I just explained to you, for those that don't know, high precision means that uh, the needle is to the left, which means that the thread coming up comes up directly underneath the needle rather than coming up at an angle, so it gives you a better stitch. Some machines have it, some machines don't. Now, all I want to do is straight stitch. Uh, oh, I'm on a different machine now. Uh, put down. Straight stitch. Roughly an eighth of an inch. Oh, I, I put I have put mine on three and a half. My stitch length is at three and a half. I think on most machines you can alter your stitch length. Straight stitch, but on three and a half. Yeah? Rip it up, twizzle. Nope. One more stitch. Whip it up, twizzle. Oh, this, I keep saying this machine needs to go for service. Either that or I need to buy a new foot. Right, thank you, everybody.
kehidupan lo You see my frustration with this I just hit my foot pedal apart I think And as I've said to you numerous times before, you don't push it, you just guide it. Stop it. So you might think to yourself, well hang on a minute, why why make us cut a uh, 10 inch square and then you're going to cut it down from 10 to 9? Uh, uh, well because some people are going to be using um, a 10 inch square from a layer cake to start off with. So now I'm just trimming trying not to cut through my stitches I'm just trimming the odds off that bare pencil yep oh yeah uh, and there's a little bit I could trim up this side little teeny bit I could trim off that side okay so now we got a 9 inch by 10 inch square do not cut the white background do not cut that because we want this to be a little bit smaller than the inside so that we get this overlap all around the, the bowl or the basket so that's why the bottom bit has to be a little bit smaller okay hang on okay now uh, you can see that that's the widest bit and that's the shortest bit so I want you to have it width looking at you so the shortest bits are at the sides that's important now you can use a ruler like this I want you to make a two and a half inch line all the way across the fabric so you can if you've got a big ruler like this or say you've got a, a, that's a square as well so you've got a, a strip ruler like this you can plop it on one one at the top and look for your two and a half inch line okay and using a friction pen draw that two and a half inch line uh, I happen to have a two and a half inch ruler which makes life a lot easier for me so I can just whack it on the edge find the edge all the way down and then just draw my two and a half inch line all the way around and that's what we're going to do is literally remember that with a fusible pen it lying out with a friction pen it lying out okay so two and a half inches all the way around so you end up that well, line's not very good is it So you end up
with your square looking like that yeah now it's very important I'm just going to check that a minute because I got a very good eye no it's right it's looked odd but there we are uh, so now okay still still using your work, walking foot still on three and a half okay put your Bozel or whatever you're using under your machine and those lines we've just drawn follow them just follow them all the way down and off all of them literally all of them and the reason why we're doing this is because with foam if you give it a stitch line it will bend to your will it will do oh right i'm supposed to crease here i'm supposed to do something special here yeah so we're kind of teaching the foam that this is what we want I don't know why, but my uh, perhaps I need to change my needle. But my thread started shredding there. Anyway, quick re-thread. Where was I? Here. Just the one. Okay, not too bad. So I've literally just sewn all those bits uh, that we drew the lines, yeah? Because uh, this this is the first one with bozel, this is the second one with fleece, and I have just ironed this and cut it, uh, but now I've got to do the same process with the fleece one of making the two and a half inch lines. So now these two are at the same uh, place, yeah? Have them orientated so that the widest edges at the top we want to cut out the shorter of the two blocks you could use your uh, cutter or you could use don't cut into stitches just cut just past the stitches just a minute oh I knew who that is I don't, I don't need it. Right, so cut that. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm just using a nice sharp pair of material scissors. I'm not cutting into my stitches. I'm cutting as close as I can to my stitch line. Yep. Oh. An odd set. Right. 
So then I get left with a wide bit across the top. I get left with a nice fat eye. And I'm going to do exactly the same with this one. Which obviously is only fleece. So it's a lot easier to cut. Oh, Christ, let's try and cut the one underneath. Come on, come away. Try not to cut my stitches, but as close to as I can. Right now, so we got nice fat eyes. Yeah. Uh, what I'm going to do now is just do a very light press over this to get rid of all these purple marks. Because once we start folding it up, it'd be difficult to iron. So I'm just going to get rid of those drawn marks made with a friction pen. <laughs> 